For this next video, I'm going to talk to you about some soft tissue techniques you can do for the extensor group of the forearm. Typically, you don't tend to get too many symptoms along this area, but there is a condition called lateral epicondylitis, commonly known as a tennis elbow, where basically the pain would be around the lateral epicondyle around here. Most of the time it's by one particular tendon, and that is known as the extensor carpi radialis brevis. And then you might find, if you ask the patient to push up on the wrist, and you might feel it along here, and also if you push up on the middle finger, then that might also be painful as well because it affects the function of the, the middle phalanx here. So what we're going to do, we're going to treat, rather than specifying just the epicondyle, because this is a conjoined region, okay? So there's many tendons that conjoin to one small place. And if you just irritate something that's already irritated, then no doubt you make the condition worse. So what you might want to do is maybe focus on the extensor group along here. Now, I've already applied a little bit of wax and the wax I'm using is a fascial release wax by Songbird and it works very well. So I don't tend to put too much on there. So I, I, I use something called a sheen rather than a shine. Okay, so I don't put loads of oil, even though he's got a little bit of hair, but he doesn't have too much along here. So I've just put enough on there so I can actually apply the technique. I'm not gonna use my thumbs for this. So I'm gonna try if I can to use my fingers and reinforce my fingers. So what we're gonna do is all the movements my patient will do will all be either active, as in they will do it, or I control it passively. But then there'll be a slight variation of what we'll do as we go through. So the first technique we're gonna do is the patient's going to start where the muscle group is in a shortened position, and then I'm gonna ask him to slowly flex where he's now lengthening the muscle group in here. And then what we're gonna do is I'm going to apply pressure on two or three fingers we can start at the distal part of the extensor group, and then from here, and I'm going to just reinforce my pressure, and then I'm gonna ask my patient to slowly flex as I'm gliding through. It's hard to say how much pressure. If I use too much pressure, I will limit what my patient is trying to achieve. Now, the patient will go as far as they can, okay? So they will flex as far as they can, but I've only maybe gone a third or half away along. So what we're gonna do then is, the patient comes back into extension, and then I start where I finished the first technique. Take a breath in, please. And as my patient breathes out, I breathe out as well, and I will glide through along there. And again, my patient will go as far as he possibly can, and then we will start again. Once the patient has done this a few times, they'll understand the process. Take a breath, on your breath, and then you will glide through that. Okay, so I'm just slowly making my way through some of the extensor muscles towards. You might find it's tender in a few places along here, but that's quite normal. Okay, so be careful on pain. Pain perception, one to 10, 10 being very painful. Okay, these techniques I try to stick to under five. Okay, so if it's like an eight, nine or 10, I would leave it for another day. So if it's around three to four, that would be okay, yeah, to perform the technique. So let's watch out again. So we start in an extension. I can just use one hand if I want to and glide rather than reinforcing and glide through that. And I can also change my angles. I can work around so I can rotate my fingers. He's gone as far and off you go again. So he understands, he breathes in, breathes out and I'm gliding down through that. Keep my fingers straight as I'm gliding down through that. Now, I can also turn around, okay, and take a breath in. Okay, and I can also glide this way, working through and that would be okay to do. Now the idea of these techniques is, think about this, okay? As I'm gliding, I'm almost lengthening from the proximal attachment as I'm pushing here. When I come round this way, I'm almost lengthening from the distal attachment from here, and that would be okay. Now, so that would be like an active. I can change it, I can work into the brachial radialis muscles in here, the other extensors, I can come around so I can glide and work around. So what I'm naturally doing there, so I'm holding his arm and I'm almost controlling, so relax, so let me do the movement. So I'm just now passively, so I will control the movement. Why? Because when he lowers it down, it's working in an eccentric to lengthen. When I'm doing it, the muscles are relatively relaxed. And the good thing is, is that I can glide through, so I can control the movements and I can ease off and I can glide through and I can start back again. 
and I can glide. I can also rotate into pronation. I can also rotate into supination along here. So I can glide, so I can vary it. I can change my angles of my hand here, okay? So I can come in more transversely, going across the fibers, whilst I still flex the wrist in here. I can change my hand positioning, okay? So from here, I can glide through from there. And you can see just by rotating, rotating, I can target different areas. Okay, so I can glide and I can flex, I can work through. If it is a particular tender point and you believe it to be a trigger point, then you might just want to hold, wait for the tissue just to calm down, the symptoms to reduce before you carry on. Okay, named after Travell and Simmons, the trigger points. You might find they are referring, so when you press, you might feel it yeah, distance to where you are actually pressing and gliding through that. Now, if you said to your patient, can you push up against my hand, please? So he contracts for 10 seconds, 10, 9, and so on. After 10 seconds, now, the muscle has contracted. It now will go through a relaxation process and is called a PIR, post-isometric relaxation. So that would be a form of muscle energy technique. So what we now, we have a relaxed tissue and we have a window of opportunity of 25 seconds where I can glide through whilst it's in a relaxed state. So that would be like a, a PIR technique of MET. And if it's particularly tender, I can say to him again, push up. So he pushes up a 20% effort for about 10 seconds. And after the 10 seconds, breathe in. And on the out breath, I lengthen passively from there. Now, if it's still too painful where you are pressing, what you can do instead is, instead of activating the agonist, push up, which would be the extensors, you could say to your patient, push down. So that's activating the flexors. Now these tissues, look, they now soften. So if he's pushing down, which is isometric, I can then glide through whilst he is still pushing down. And you'll find now the tissue is now inhibited because it's called reciprocal inhibition. So then I can use that type of technique. I can also get him to push your hand, so push and overcome me, so you keep going, so you glide past me. So now that would be an RI technique because he's gliding through, ease off, and off you go again. So he is pushing the antagonist, which is telling the agonist to relax through a process called RI, which is another type of MET. If you want to, there is another technique in here called like a soft tissue release. There is a technique called ART, active release technique, but you have to be trained under the ART umbrella. Yeah, so be careful on, on those techniques. So don't call it ART if you're not trained, okay? So call it an STR and you would be safe. What you can do is, let's say you found like an, an adhesion soft tissue restrictions in here. You can, if you want to, come to that and lock in either two fingers. If you use a thumb, reinforce your thumb from here. I'm going to lock into the tissues and I want you to slowly flex, please. Flex your wrist whilst you are lock in. Okay, so I'm applying pressure. I can ease off, lock into the tissues on on the out breath, like he's doing. I lock in and I can do that. I can also come from this end and do the same technique. And we can apply that in different areas. If you are using one thumb, if you can try to reinforce it, but you might find two fingers would be better. Even though the pain is around the lateral epicondyle, I try not to work this area too much because like I said, you can irritate something that's already irritated. So you'd be better off to work around the whole group of the extensors using these techniques. Try not to over-treat um, because you will cause some, some soft tissue irritation. I hope you've been, enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.